Kick is wide left. And the Chargers have come to Chicago and beaten the Chicago Bears. By come to Chicago and beaten the Chicago Bears by a final score of 17-16. to 16. So I, uh, I feel physically sick. <clears throat> you just, you can't, you can't lose that game. You, uh, you can't make up how it ended, started, went, all of it. Uh, as the Chargers do beat the Bears at Soldier Field, uh, just unbelievably, 17-16, as the Bears are now under 500 at 3-4, and four, their season very much on the brink. And uh, Hamp will be with Kaz with you till 5.30 today. On 720 WGN, 312-981-7200. Gentlemen, OB, you look more than ready to go. Go ahead, my well, friend. I'm, I'm just going to tell you. Again, I, I cannot believe what's going on with this football team. With a defense that, yes, can get you and almost give you a chance to win the Super Bowl. And we have a coach by the name of Nagy who does not understand the game at this level. He does not understand the game at this level, how is it possible that you could be on a six-yard line, goal to goal, and not one time, not one time, do you throw to somebody or try to score a touchdown to somebody in the end zone? How is that possible? You come back again, what, on a four-yard line, and you have another four downs to score a touch, and you don't even attempt to get into the end zone? you got to be kidding me. This guy's an imbecile. My God, you let a five and two team, a five and two team halfway through this season and come in here into Chicago, our ballpark, and take away take away a victory from us because of a stupid coach who plays scared to death offense. I, this guy, I've got it up to my eyebrows with this naggy. And the other kid who we got. Herky Jerky, by the way, and that's the name of the quarterback. Just watch him play football, folks. He is not a starting quarterback in the National Football League. Never has, and he never will be. I'm, I'm so aggravated that a team could come in like this and take a victory away from us because of a stupid, gutless coach. Are, are you referring mostly to... Maggie! Right. Are you, did I say it loud enough? You did, OB. I just want to honor a line. You're, you're not talking specifically on taking a knee or going to victory formation at the 20. You're talking about not going for the end zone early combined, correct? That's exact. How many touchdowns have we scored this year? You go back to the playoff game last year against, at home against the Eagles, and we score one touchdown with, a what, less than a minute to go? And we start out this first, what, three or four games? How many touchdowns we score? One or two in the first three or four games this year? What's going on with this guy? All right, uh, OB, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I'm not I, apologizing for anything no, I said here. No. This guy, I... I I, I, I can't... I, the, 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 flabbergasted is the word, OB. Hey, you know what? And I said this during the game, Mark Carmen. I said, you know what? This is an embarrassment to pro football. To, to, to have a certain level of competence with the certain players that we have and to be playing this bad, this scared, this gutless. I got to tell you, I, I, I detest this team. I, I, from top to bottom, they play gutless. And, I, you know, I don't want to hear about the defense. I don't want to hear about this and that. What OB says is, is, is dead on. It's right at the heart of the matter. We've got a so-called head coach that's playing like he's got his head up, you know what. And at some point, the fans deserve so much better. You know, I, and, and I said this, you know, at the end of the first half when, when the stumble bombs almost blew a chance to get a crip shot field goal because they don't have any idea what they're doing when they get in the red zone. They're so incompetent. But all that being said, we had a chance to be able to win this game until the bumbler, Trubisky. And think about this. Baseball, you got closers that come in. 
We need a closer as a quarterback, and that could be Chase Daniel. Somebody's got to keep this idiot from costing us football games. You know and I know, at the end of the Raider game, if Chase Daniel played the fourth quarter, we probably win that game. If he would have played today in the fourth quarter, we probably would have won this game. But what does the bumbler do? He throws a stupid interception, and then, with no pocket presence at all, he gets a bull rush tackle into his lap, and then he tries to, you know, stumble around, and he fumbles the ball, giving them, a, you know, a, a red zone opportunity to score and take the lead. Guys, I'm telling you, there's a, there, this team, it's gutless and it's rotten. And I knew it this summer when you and I went to the 100-year anniversary. They were strutting around, coaches, players, everybody was strutting around like they had done something. They didn't do a damn thing last year. They didn't do dip and here's the thing yeah they went 12 and 4 but they squandered away a chance to do something in the playoffs by being a Chinese fire drill here at Soldier Field score one touchdown just like today and got their butts handed to them by a crap team the Philly team was a crap team this is a bigger crap team they're not 5 and 2 will be there I think you meant 2 and 5 I, I'm sorry did yeah, I say 5 and 2 now the, yeah I meant now 2 and two, 5 I apologize now they're 3 and 5 and guess what how does it feel at the bottom, bums? This team is at the bottom of the, of the NFC North division for the first time in well over a year. And you know what? They deserve it. Hey, you know the thing is, and, and again, get, to get back in, I mean, you got to come from somewhere, okay? This is the guy calling his shots. This is what they do in the offseason. This is what they do in training camp. This is what they do in the exhibition season. And this is what he does like he did last year. This guy will not throw the ball down the field. Well, uh, I guess, obviously, he must believe Trubisky can't do that. And if that's the fact, then what the hell is he doing at a starting quarterback on the Chicago Bears? When we do have some team that we can win some games and we can get close to the Super Bowl, and they keep going with this kid. And I'll tell you what, sooner or later, Danny, sooner or later, something's got to happen. He's got to sit this kid down and give Chase Daniel a chance to move this team forward. The season's not totally over yet. It's about winning a games. We're, this winning. Kid, Trubisky will not win games for us, okay? He's scared to death. You see him. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But, boy, again, I'm telling you, for you folks who watch that game and for you people that were out there today, you saw exactly what kind of coach we have. The guy doesn't know what the hell he's doing as a head coach in the National Football League. And today, again, proved it. It proved it. Well, the best story from today was Montgomery going 27. Who cares? Hey, they the used him one mean? drive after that. They, you know what? If you got a quarterback like Trubisky, then you feature the run. But you know what? How many times did we go shotgun inside the 10-yard line today on, on the goal line? I mean, that is like... It, 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 it's sickening. And when we came out at the, at the beginning of the third quarter and we ran the ball with purpose, guess what? We were running a conventional eye formation quarterback under center. But he's too, he thinks he's too cool, too smart, too smug to, you know, he, he said these bum, two of the, these uh, announcers, oh, they didn't bring me in to run the eye. Guess what, dummy? You better find something that wins a game. Because right now you're at the bottom of a of a division yeah. with nowhere to go. Yeah. How long does does he go on? And you know what, folks? You know the the, the thing that's coming. I told there's some storms coming our way. We have not even really played some of the really good teams in the National Football League that are on our schedule. We haven't played them yet. We still got to go up to Green Bay. We got to play in Green Bay. We got to play in Detroit again. We got to play. Kansas City. I mean, it goes. We got to play the Los Angeles Rams out there. We haven't played yet the really good teams in the league. We got to go to Philly next week, and they killed Buffalo, a five and one team today. And I'll tell you something, Nagy. If you don't, if you don't loosen up, and if you don't start playing big time football, I hope the fans in this town run you out. To me, I'm done with you. You're a head he should coach. fire himself. You are he not should a fire head coach. himself. Yeah. yeah, he should fire himself. Ob, be a man. Fire yourself. And if you don't, and I tell you what, 
if you get a, if he goes out there, I'm talking about Trubisky, Mark. If he goes out there and plays another game like well, like he basically plays, this town is going to turn against this guy so bad you're not going to believe it. Because you know what? We haven't won the world championship here in 34 years since the great 85 team. Enough is enough. And you can't see it that you have a quarterback that can't throw the damn football. The boos were out early. They were out often. The boos were the players of the game because you know what? They that they, they our team looked like a bunch at the Keystone Cup bums. And you know what? They came out in the third quarter. Why? Why did they get in the I formation and run it with purpose? Because they had heard the boos. Nagy heard the boos. Everybody heard the boos. So they knew the fans had had it up to here. Well, and that's why I brought up Montgomery. He had a great day. You were running the football. The Chargers were terrible. All you needed to do was keep it on the ground, which is not what you want him to do, OB, but they would have won. Well, wait a minute. I'm talking when you get in the red zone, you're on a six-yard line, and you don't make one attempt to throw. How about Shaheen, our tight end, that's 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, have him go in the corner of the end zone, you're on a six-yard line, throw the damn ball 13, 12 feet in the air, and hope the hell he catches it. Do something Try to get the ball into the end zone so he could score a touchdown. I, I, Danny, Mark, and you, yeah, yeah, folks, yeah. am I right or am I wrong? But you, you don't, don't even attempt it. You don't need to question yourself, OB. We're, God almighty. They're all right with you, brother. You know, and here's here's the really underbelly part of this is San Diego. They're a team going nowhere, and they knew it coming in. And they wanted to go nowhere. They weren't playing the game hard. Bingo. They weren't trying to win this game until the, the, the bum throws the pick and then gives them a fumble. Then they're all of a sudden, hey, wait a minute. Hey, let's try to win. And then they come on, and they, they, they score the touchdown to take the lead. And you know what? This we, we would not change one word if we would have kicked a field goal that went through the uprights and we would have won the game. They deserve it for the way they played. And, 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 and you know what? Sometimes you get in life what you deserve. Sometimes it's worse. Today is worse. Here's the other thing. You go back to the game in Denver when the, when the refs gave them one more second on the Put clock. Put it back on the clock. To kick the field goal and win that game. Okay? If that, ha if that doesn't happen, we've won two games this year. Two games, and we're supposed to be in a hunt, and then whose fault is it? Whose fault did not have this, and I'm going to say it again because it's the God's truth. Who did not prepare this team during the offseason, when they went to camp, during the exhibition season, and have these kids ready to play? They want to win. I know damn well they want to win, and they're giving their heart out there. And this head coach with no, that no, offense. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I watch I, Eddie Jackson is window shopping on Michigan Avenue. He ain't hitting nobody. He ain't making a play on the ball. He's loafing. A bunch of these guys are loafing. And I'm telling you, you want to watch a film with me? Come down here. I'm just telling you, OB, yeah, they say they want to win. It's obvious to me they can live with losing now. Well, I'll tell you what. What I'm saying is they, they do. If they don't have that mindset going in, then we're really in trouble, Dan. We're in trouble. If, if, we're in trouble. if, if what you're saying is true, then this Watch season's it. over with, folks. Take off for Florida or California earlier. The show's not over. We're coming back with your calls. 312-981-7200. We're here till 530 up until our Blackhawks pregame show. That's right. We're ready to roll. 17-16. Chargers beat the Bears. Bears. Let him go. Let him play football. It's the Chevy Hamp and OB Show with Kaz. And it's brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com on 720 WGN Radio. Hamp and OB with Kaz, sponsored by Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at Chevy. DriveChicago.com, 312-981-7200. Bears lose to the Chargers, 17-16. We all just took five Advil during the break. Obi, how are you feeling over there? I'm okay. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm down. I'm, I'm fine. I just, uh, I, I, you know, I want this, this team to be world champs year in, year out, or whatever, like the New England Patriots, like we used to be. And what used to be is long, long gone. And when you have a chance, when you have a chance in this league to finally make some things happen, and you've got an offense, and you, all you people saw it today. You saw it today. How can you be goal to goal, goal, 
on the six yard line, I believe on the four yard line, first and goal to goal, and not one time do you attempt to throw a pass into the end zone and score a touchdown? I don't know. Does that border criminal? What the hell? Or stupidity? Or, or just massive ignorance. Well, they threw one pass to Robinson in the corner, but he threw it about... That the, was in the corner. And it was an uncatchable pass. It was a terrible throw. And, but they did get it bailed out with the pass interference on it. Right. I... I okay. Uh, let's do the Mueller game-changing moment before we get to the calls there. It's sponsored by the Mueller Auto Group with family-owned dealerships in Highland Park, Gurney, and Hoffman. It states Mueller Automotive. You will not I, I be disappointed. I would like to talk to Mike Mueller right about that, right about now and say, Mike, because he's a great Bear fan. They, and his, his kids, they're, they're great people. I like to ask Mike, what the hell do you think? What, what do you think happened today? What, what, what would be your changing moment? I He'd think it has to be. Up, well, a lot. <laughs> I, uh, you know, hey, I would go I'll be fumble. honest with you. I think it's the interception. You know, the, 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 the that was Chargers too. go right down and they miss a field goal. But for whatever reason, we had the lead, had the wind at our back. We were driving the ball. And then, you know, to, to, to throw that, you know, again, you know, and Spillman, the announcer, made a really good point. You read the corner. The corner did not, you know, jump on the out route. So you never throw that pass. Of course, you know, numb, you know what, throws it. You know, I don't know. How do you lose to a team? Their third down efficiency, and I'm talking about the San Diego, excuse me, Los Angeles Chargers. Their third down efficiency was pathetic. was two out of ten. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. They had seven zillion penalties. They dropped a touchdown pass in the end zone. Well, they, they had did the ball 16 they minutes more. Two right. touchdown passes two, in the end two, zone. Two, correct. Two and missed the field goal. Correct. And that was 17 actual points that should have been on that scoreboard. Bear and, and let's just go back to this again, Mark. I, I can't believe, and, and you sit there, and you, pl you play the game. You know why you're playing the game, okay? How do you continually let teams, especially one, especially teams you know that you can beat, Come in here and take us down. How does that continually happen? Jeff Vukovic is back in our WGN huddle here, the straight shooter who knows insurance. He's on our side. Vuk! And he'd love to help you nationwide on your side. Check out JeffVuk.com. Nationwide is on your oh side. Boy. Phone calls after the 3.30 news, which is coming up in two and a half minutes. Bears lose to the Chargers, 17-16. They're on the road. Yeah, it's the kicker. He missed it. Yeah, and that, well, we'll get to Eddie Pinheiro at some point here. But, yes, uh, if you make the kick, you win well, the football you could, game. Well, you could say that, but then how do you how do you confront the 17 other points Seven twenty. they should have had? 7.20 WGM. WGN Sports. The Bears lost to the Chargers. The score 17 to 16. Join Hamp and he'll be with Cause for the post game coming up on 720 WGN and WGNRadio.com. The Blackhawks hosting Los Angeles tonight. The pregame with Chris Bowden at 530. The faceoff at 6 o'clock with John Wideman and Troy Murray on 720 WGN and WGNRadio.com. WGN traffic. There's a crash on the inbound Ryan at Garfield. Traffic is solid all the way back to the Skyway. And stop and go traffic on the outbound Ike from Cicero to 25th Avenue because of a reported accident. On the northbound Stevenson, a crash near the Tri-State has traffic jammed up to Bolingbrook Drive. For personalized traffic on demand, get the Traffic Chicago app, approved by the mortgage experts of Team Hochberg. Just search T-R-A-F-F-I-X Chicago. Now the weather from the WGN Chicago Weather Center. Today, sunny and breezy with a high near 58 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a high near 52. A chance for rain in the afternoon. And then on Tuesday, partly sunny skies with a high near 45 degrees. Right now it is 56 at O'Hare, 56 at Midway, 56 at Morton Grove, and 56 at the Lakefront. I'm Pam Jones on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. A touchdown saving tackle by Jenkins. And by far his best day in the NFL, his longest career carry of 55 yards. That was one bright spot. Dave Montgomery played well. Very well. 27 carries, 135 yards. The Bears' offense was actually doing something. And then they started throwing the football. My favorite part of the fumble, by the way, in the fourth quarter when Trubisky turned it over was him picking up his hand warmer on the ground. What is it, 55 degrees over at Soldier Field today? What? And he's sitting there like... 55, 60, yeah. I, I don't get it. 
Why, he, and why I, does he even have a hand warmer? Why, why does he have a hand warmer? warmer? Guys, I, 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 I talked about this on Cochran's show Friday morning. You know, here the coaches are wearing monsters of the Midway sweatshirts. And your so-called, you know, titular leader is out there with a hand warmer and it's 60 degrees. It does, it, 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 uh, trust me, nothing screams phony punk more than a quarterback with a hand warmer. <laughs> Jesus. I have a Look. question for our callers and for you, Mark. Oh, well, yeah. let, the, let the caller, well, let's go to the callers. Let them, I have a question. Uh -oh. If it's a tough game in, in Philadelphia, at halftime, do you make the change at quarterback? Do you bring Chase Daniel in? Yes. I, I don't think they will. But they, I would. I would. They can't. I love to yeah. hear it from, the, yeah. from our listeners. Yeah. Okay. But here's the deal. The answer is yes. They should, but the arena boy ain't going to do it because he he'll get spanked by uh, Daddy Pace because you know they've got their golden child Trubisky. They've got to the prop up before we go. Yeah, these two guys will get right. fired, Pace and Nagy. And I'll tell you what, Nagy will never be a coach again in the National Football League or an offensive coordinator. Okay, and Pace. What's on burning his forehead is that those passing on those two quarterbacks and him waiting and giving away an ent almost an entire third draft to move up one to draft this kid. That's on Pace's head, and he will never be a general manager again. And this guy, Nagy, we got will never be a head coach again. Write it down. Mark my words on it. I don't think changes will come this year, but maybe they will, Obi. Maybe they will. We'll see. 312-981-7200. We're going to get to Kaz in two minutes, but uh, you wanted to go to a caller, OB, so let's get uh, Mike and Rockford real quick, who I'm going to guess agrees with you. Go ahead, Mike. Welcome to WGN. Hey guys. guys, listen. Hey, this is on Pace's head. Oh, yeah. Now, we, got, we missed a field goal today. Why? Because we got rid of Bob, Robbie Gold and this, this uh, party last year. Now, now this... And then the guy can't draft a quarterback. He can't draft anybody. And why? Why Why is this happening, guys? Here's what I'm going to say real quick, OB, to your comment, and I agree with you 100%, but I don't want to see Chase Daniel in. I want Trubisky in there to fail because if he even has an opportunity, you guys, this organization from the top on down will find a way to sign him to a multi-year, multi-million dollar contract, and we're going to be stuck with him, Nagy, and Pace, for two or three more years, God forbid. So I hate to say this, guys. This season's tanked anyway. I just hope he fails on his knees at this point because I don't see him as a quarterback, guys. And they got to go out and get a Nick Foles. Or while, while the window's still open on this defense, guys, they got to get someone to patch the hole so they can win now because that hole's going to close in two years, guys. Mike, right, Mike, I appreciate it. Mike, let me tell you something. If, if they did that, they went out and brought Nick Foles in here and all the draft choices and everything they gave up and to move up one to draft him over Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes, if they did that and they made a trade now for Folds to bring him in here, holy cow, you talk about an atom bomb going off. Yeah, but you got to move forward, and the Bears are gonna, at some point are going to have to be honest. That they, listen, they made a mistake, and now and and well, how long are you going to sit think, in it? You think that you think Pace is going to admit to that? He's going to have to at some point. Listen, people make mistakes in life. You're going to swing and you're going to miss. Mark, you, you've got to move something. forward. The good Lord is not going to come down and touch Mitch Trubisky on his head and say, right. "You're going to be one of the top quarterbacks." Exactly. He can't. Right. He doesn't have it. Right. So you got to move on. But I'll guarantee you. They won't move on. Well, Gardner Minshew today was 22 of 34 for the Jaguars, who, by the way, was a sixth-round pick. Who, by the way, Matt, who, who Matt Nagy said that they liked him. If you liked him, he went in the sixth round. He threw three touchdowns today. Nick Foles is backing him up. They have, he's looks like Minshew is better than him. Foles is going to be available. You probably could get they him. They are not going to admit again that they made because nope. that's a mistake that is absolutely humongous. That'll go down in history. The NFL is one of the you, dumbest moves ever you, by pace. Yeah, but you can't. Okay, at some point you got to. You can't double and triple and quadruple down on it. You you got to do it. Watch it. This is the Watch Chicago him. Bears. Okay. Hey, Mike. Mike made such great sense. You know. Hey, keep him out there. Let the world see it. Guess what? They're not watching it up there at Hellas Hall. Let's bring in Kaz, the Kaz man, Glenn Kozlowski on his own show. Hamp will be in Kaz, sponsored by your Chicago land and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers, ChevyDriveChicago.com. Kazi, welcome to the show. Your thoughts, my friend. <sighs> That's all I can say. I just breathe. 
heavy. Um, That's the best hits Everything we've had so everybody's far. saying is correct. The, the problem is that um, the Bears have to admit their mistake. They got to move on. And, you know, truly, um, I, I will tell you, Nagy will have another job somewhere because that's what they do in the NFL. But having said that, he has been horrendous. You don't you don't get in the red zone that many times and come away with nine points. Um, so really, you know, we we could talk about the quarterback. We could talk about pace. We could talk about all these other things. Those were some of the worst calls I've ever seen in the red zone by an offensive coordinator. I mean, they were terrible. Did any of it make sense to you guys no, watching them? No. And so that's, you know, we look, I, I know. I mean, we, we've got a quarterback that is at best below par, but figure out a way to put it in the end zone. Figure out a way when you got a first down on the two-yard line to punch it in in four downs. You do that, you win the game. It's, you know, forget the kicker. And, I, you know, normally I'm one of those guys, Ed, that will go, well, the kicker missed this field goal to win the game. Reality of it is the Bears should have put that thing away in the first half, and they didn't. No doubt. So that's why the Chargers beat them tonight. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, Philip Rivers, say whatever you want about the guy. He's, uh, he, he knows how to win. And, he you know, no matter what the record is, this guy is throwing the ball around. He's trying to win. And give the Chargers some credit. But, really, it came down to just poor coaching offensive side of the football. Okay. And guys. then really giving up, you know, giving up some uh, big plays too on defense too. I mean, at some point you got to buckle down. If you're the best defense in the league, you got to you got to start making some stops, don't you? Oh, oh, wait a minute. They're too busy uh catching their uh their comments on Twitter uh, about how great they are. Oh, I know. I mean, right. it's, it's frustrating watching it across the board. And you know, unfortunately, Ryan Pace, young guy, you went for it, and he's gonna. He won't get fired. Let's don't kid ourselves. Uh, it's going to be Pace, or I mean, it'll be uh, Nagy before Pace, because quite frankly, you know, Nagy has gotten enough goodwill for whatever reason, so he won't. But he's responsible for what we're seeing right now, hey, guys. and hopefully, he can fix it. That's all. Okay, cause here's the here, here's the thing that just sticks it to me. You know, we're down at halftime. The the fans are booing them. So what do they do? Oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Well, let's get in the eye formation and run the ball. So they do. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, score a touchdown. And wow. they go right down and and you know, uh, herky jerky throws a, a couple and keeps the sticks moving. Okay, okay, tip the cap. But then that's it. Then they think, oh, we're going to be really cool again and start throwing it down the field, and he throws an interception, which was the turning point in the game. We had the lead. We had to win with this. We we were basically playing downhill until he throws the interception. Now, How about the fumble, too? I mean, uh, think about the fumble. How I mean, all we hear what? about is how athletic he is. My God, my brother was more athletic than that. I mean, to get bum-rushed and then you turn around and drop the ball? Oh, my God. It, uh it was embarrassing. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it, I, I get where you're going, Dan, and everything is right. But at the end of the day, these young coaches, there's only one young coach now out of all that group of guys that are doing well. And he has the best quarterback in the NFC and Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, their offense is horrible. They play great defense. They're kind of the Bears the last year. Kazi, what would without, you have called? Without, you know, with a, a much better quarterback. That's the difference. What would you have called to the goal line? What would a Glenn Kozlowski play call look like? Well, I would, listen, I'm running the ball and I'm pounding it. So that's me. You know, call me crazy, but that's what I do. OB I believe in it. it. I think if you can't get that, then there's something wrong with your team and there's something wrong with your O line, and then you got to look at your players. But if you know, right, Dan, I mean, let's be honest. You got to move a yard. You got to move two yards. You got to pound the ball and run it. Just you had 17 plays down there for crying out loud. Pound it and go straight ahead. And the kid, you know, snapped off a 55 yard run. Why not pound it? You know, I told the story a year ago when the Bears went up to practice with the Patriots. I think it was two years, three years ago. After practice, uh, you know, uh, Fox was the coach. And, you know, all the, the, the tough guy Bears, they run into the locker room. Tom Brady and Gronk go to the end zone, and they run about 25 option routes from, like, the six-yard line. And they throw all kinds of different routes, timing, all this, working right. on it after practice, okay? Now... 
OB's always screaming, throw it in the end zone, throw it in the end zone. You know, two two things can happen that are good. He catches it or you get a PI. But we we don't do that. Why is that? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. Because we don't have anybody that's competent enough to do that with authority and and, and conviction. They they don't know what's going to happen. Do you did, what what did you think at the end of the first half when they were stumbling around and they didn't get the, the, the ball uh, killed until one second or something left on the clock? Uh, I mean, it's like they've never been there. They don't know what they're pass. doing. What, what what are you doing? It's like come on, you just go straight ahead. Let's either we're better men than you, or you're better men than us. Or you know, I mean. I, yeah, everything about what they did is dumb. I mean, you, you watch the NFL now. They allow people basically to run over the inside or you know, the outside guy or inside guy on the slant and out if it's within three yards. A simple play down there, is it not? Well, here, guys. Here's, here's the bottom line. I mean, how line. hard is that? Ed, you run into the safety that's manned up on the inside slot receiver and he catches the ball for a touchdown. Oh, that's terrible. Hard to do. Well, here's the bottom line. Well, it's line. hard if you don't practice it. Yeah. Here's the bottom line the way I see it. Again, I, I, I'm i looking at kind of like what we're at home again. And a, and a, perfectly what we need from last week, last couple of weeks, losses going into this game. We have a two and five team coming in here that have already looked like they mailed it in. And it kind of looked when the first half like some of them were mailing it in. And they, they come in here in our home, in our home, and they walk out with a win. And we score 16 points. 16 points. And you want to look, okay, we're, what, what is, is the offensive defense? No, it's right. And Glenn, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's right on Nagy and his coaching staff's head. You can't. I'm not going to put this on the players. I'm sticking it right on Nagy's head because I firmly believe he doesn't know what the hell he's doing as an offensive coordinator, let alone a head coach. I mean, I think if well, we go, go ahead, guys. Well, I'm going to say he, you know he's part of Andy Reid's tree, and so he gets a free pass. But we've we've done minute what he did when he, he finally must have been got one to call of the plays that fell in off. Kansas City. He was awful, right? Think about the playoff game where they were up 20 points and they lost. So, yeah. uh, I mean, that's right. It, it, it really is. You, you can't, you've got to create a way to score from the two-yard line. I mean, think about this. One touchdown from the two-yard line and this game is a, a victory. That's all you had to do, right? Am I right or wrong? I mean, it's, what about, it's not what, hard. How about and four plays? First down. How about four plays from the six-yard line? I, I don't care where it is. But you know what I'm saying, Ed? I mean, think <laughs> about it. You are in the red zone, and all you got to do is come up with a play to get into the end zone. And you know, part of it is, yeah, you don't have a competent quarterback. Well, that's not his fault. But there's ways to figure out how to put it in the end zone. Without having the greatest quarterback, you see, got you see teams do it all the time. So, I mean, it, it just it it, uh, it this is on uh, Matt Nagy's head. It will be on his head. It is, and it you know it, 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 he will work again. Though don't don't kid yourself, guys. Yeah, gonna, he'll be working hey, for somebody. Glenn, Trust real me. quickly, he will get a job, but not as yeah. a head coach, as not offensive coordinator. Maybe special teams or whatever the good old boys club, but he will never. Be an offensive coordinator, head coach oh, I again. I guarantee Andy will bring him back, and he'll be Andy's uh, OC. And Andy Making calls all dinner the reservations. You know how that goes. I mean, I'll make you a little wager on that one, well. Glenn. I, I, all right, one last thing, guys. And here's the problem. This team is playing with an ulterior motive. Instead of trying to just punch it in and win running the ball, they want to puff up you-know-who's stats know. where he has right. a— a right. touchdown yeah. pass. So he looks like the hero, and exactly. that's wrong too. You're right, Dan. That's, that's even what that, that's the hidden hand behind some of these calls. And I, I can't use the language on air that I'd like to say to these people that are 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 are, are sabotaging the team, trying to prop up this punk. Kazi, right. we'll see you next week with the Eagles, yeah. my friend. Oh, yeah, I can hardly wait to watch that because the Eagles have nothing but anger in their hearts right now. So 
Yeah, lucky us. We get to draw coach. them. But you know what, Dan? That's a, you know, and, and Ed, you, you and I could talk about this, the three of us. But what Dan said is the most intelligent thing today, and that is your 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 head coach is in essence trying to make the general manager look like a hero, and it costs his team a game, and that's wrong. That's what's wrong about this Shameful. whole thing. Kazi, we'll talk to you next Thanks, week. Right. Now, I'd like to you say something here. Go ahead, Glenn, okay. you and Dan are entirely too critical. Yes, You're just entirely we are. Too but at critical. least I left uh, Mitch alone today because <laughs> I really wanted to call him out, Ed, but out of respect to you, I never will. So you got it, brother. <laughs> See you later. Have a great week. See you, right, Kazi. Quick time out. Come on back or get your calls in here. 312 981 7200. his confidence. Going to hand it off, and that is a first down, and then some for Montgomery off to the races. He's inside the 20 and dropped to the 15-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle by Jenkins. And Trubisky turns it loose and making the catch, but run out of bounds is Mike Davis, and they're going to get a penalty. First caller tackle, defense number 36. From inside the five for Chicago, and Montgomery will get it. And he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Now we saw him throw it to Shaheen down there. And they throw it to Patterson. And he is bottled up. Third down and goal. Trubisky rolling, looking in the corner of the end zone. And it's going to be another penalty on the Chargers. It's interference. Defense. Number 20. Chargers looking confused. And that ball batted down. They're going to run it this time. And Montgomery can't get there. That clock winding down to seven. They're going to. Got a shoe down right there. And now down to four, down to three, down to two. And they got to spike it. And they're going to kick a field goal. It'll be the first time it's going to be a team booed off the field leading at halftime. And the field goal is good. Yeah, they had eight plays in the red zone that last drive alone and had a total of eight yards. He had a, I was ripping that in practice. That same play. Now the ball is loose. And who is on top of the football? We wait for a signal and a fumble by Trubisky after missing a would-be touchdown. And the Chargers have the ball with 9.25 to go. That had to be the most, you have got to be kidding me moment. Although the Eddie Pinheiro miss from 41 was right there. It's tight. It's a very, very tight way, tight race. Hey, uh, thanks to Bartolini's Restaurant Catering and Banquets, family-owned, operated, and offering the best Italian cuisine in Chicago. And we have the lasagna, the chicken, the cheesecake. The, it was all fantastic, but the chicken, the chicken, you wouldn't <laughs> expect that. The chicken... It, Oh, it, was, it almost flies. It, it was some big-time chicken. All right, uh, real fast. Let me get Calvin in Hyde Park. OB, you want some callers? Let's get a caller in here. Yeah. Calvin's one of our best. What's up, Calvin? Welcome to WGN. <laughs> Guys, thanks. I tell you, they have two initials for Mr. Page, GM. Guess what that spell? S-H-I-T, which means simply how I think. That's the only way this cat could be a general manager. Mr. Mr. Nagy, he can go back and, and get up under the armpit of Andy Reid if he want to. I don't care. But the way the Bears played today, the, the uh, one, the uh, touchdown, I should say touchdown, it was one, but he overthrew the ball to Gabriel out there. He's wide open like a rusty gate. I can't believe the way they playing. So what I'm saying is, you have to damn near scrap everybody, man. That's why I'm not going to spend no three or four hundred bucks no more to go watch a damn game. It don't make no sense. It's like trying to find a virgin in the maternity ward. I'm not doing it. I tell you. And, and people, people as a whole, you know, I don't know if they listen at me or what, but I'm telling you, it's not worth my time, my effort, my hard-earned money. Now, if you battle and if you fight like the way OB did and him did, yeah, I don't mind that so bad. I don't feel like I lost much. But when you out there playing garlic and gay as a cool breeze from you know what, I don't have I don't have to deal with that. Yeah. Guys, once again, thanks for taking my call. You Great got, call. You got it, Calvin. Love love the passion. We'll get more calls in coming up after uh, four o'clock. Get the news coming up here. Yeah, you guys hang in there. We'll get to you in a second. Your Bears lose to the Chargers, seventeen sixteen. They're three and four. They're going to Philly. Eddie Pinheiro missed two field goals. 
Mitchell Trubisky with a rough fourth quarter, although he did get him into range to win the game. OB, just to make mention of that. Quick timeout, 720 WG. Just search T-R-A-F-F-I-X Chicago. Now the weather from the WGN Chicago Weather Center. Sunny and breezy today. We've reached our high, 58 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a high near 52 and a chance for rain in the afternoon. And then on Tuesday, partly sunny with a high near 45. Right now, 58 at O'Hare, 58 at Midway, 58 in Tinley Park, and 58 at the lakefront. I'm Pam Jones on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. This is the Hampton OB Show with Cars. Sponsored by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer and ChevyDriveChicago.com on 720 WGN. Bears lose to the Chargers 17 16. Season on the brink. They're 3 and 4. It's three losses in a row. Hampton will be with Kaz with you till 5.30. We are sponsored by our Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Obi, what do you want to do right now? Nothing. Go ahead. You, oh, I thought you wanted me to go to... No, I want to... I, I know let's you, get to the callers. I know you want to... I don't... You want to... We want to play Nagy and... No, no, no. The other knucklehead. I, I, I don't want to hear those the, people. The other okay? knuckle, I don't want to hear them. The other knucklehead was... What, you, what did you call him at the beginning of the show? Shuck and Jive. No. Uh, Herky jerky. Herky jerky. Oh, Herky jerky. Herky jerky. That's yeah. Right. That came from man. That's yeah. a good nickname for the kid. Way to go, Ann. We appreciate your support <laughs> in, in many different ways. Danny in Mount Prospect. Welcome to seven twenty oh. WGN. Go ahead, man. Hey, uh, thank you for taking the call. First of all, uh, this is for Dan uh, Hampton. I saw you uh, a couple weeks ago at the Senior Center in Arlington Heights, and thank you for the picture and the autograph. And I just want to say that some of those seniors at the uh, Senior Center. Uh, had more effort, more life, more enthusiasm than what I saw on the field today. Ouch. And second of all, yeah, well, no, that's true, that's true. And second of all, I was at a restaurant on Friday night in Ingleside, and they had a tremendous, uh, terrific uh, menu. And when I was looking on the sidelines today, it, that menu looked exactly like what Nagy was, was calling the plays from. So I want to know if he was looking at a menu or if he was calling <laughs> plays, because what he was calling uh, wasn't as good as what was on the menu that I saw. Thanks, Danny. I, you know, I did like his play card this week because it, it had some words on it. Last week, it was, like, it was blank on one side. You know, you would think, head coach of the football league, he'd have, he'd have he a lot of notes. Have a, he could have a TV there, a computer there. Uh, he could have a priest next to him, a bishop. He could have everybody. What you're seeing is what what this guy is, and that's what you're seeing on the field. He's a guy taking a team that really has a chance to 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 kind of really do something to get in the mix of things. And we lost three in a row. And again, you let a two and five team come in here and take a win from us. Now we're going to Philadelphia next week, and I'll tell you what, we blow that one. And it's uh, this whole thing is on Nagy. This guy, I'm telling you, this guy is clueless in the National Football League. Just look at the way he handled the offseason, training camp, the exhibition season, and look at where we're at now. Playing against teams that we should beat. Not only that, losing to them at home. You know, you go, you got to really go out of your way to do that. Hamp, what do you think? When the Bears decided to go victory formation with about 38 seconds to go at the 20 yard line, it was so predictable, you know. And again, see, that's a big picture. Instead of going ahead and trying Scared to score death. a touchdown, we're just dinking and dunking, trying to work our way up where the kicker can blow the game for us. Now, in hindsight, you're saying how how ridiculous. While it was happening, Ob and I was screaming, "What are you doing?" See again, big picture. This guy's watching a three inch screen. Three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. Don, calling from downtown. What's up, Don? Go ahead. Hey, Ob, I got to disagree with you. Nagy is not clueless. He is gutless. It is third and twelve at the twenty yard line of the Chargers. And does anybody in the, any receiver go out in a pattern? for a touchdown. No, it's a little dink and dunk. It's ridiculous. This guy has to go. Well, you couldn't have I'm said it better. Guy. You, well, you, you uh, couldn't have said it better, my friend. Believe me. And see, that, 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 that is the essence of what is the, the problem here. I mean, it's, it's like we're, we're accepting crumbs and scratching for crumbs when the cake is in the end zone. 
And, and at some point, it comes back and bites you. And we saw it time and time and time again today. Hey, you know, here's the situation. You, nothing's going to change Trubisky. Trubisky is not going to get any better. He is what he is. He was, a year ago, three, three years ago, last year, this year, he is. A year from now, whatever. Nagy's going to be the same. And you know what the, scary about, the scariest thing about what I just said? We're going nowhere, folks which I thought we had a chance that this guy might change. But when I saw what they did in the training camp, which was nothing, and I saw his game plans, which matched his game plans from last year, and how did we win last year? We won where the defense got every break, and they played phenomenal. It's not happening this year, and it shows the, the absolute inability of our head coach, who thinks he's an offensive coordinator, and he is neither or neither one of those. And guess what? You think it's going to get better as the weeks goes on? All of a sudden, he's going to become a genius head coach or a great offensive coordinator? Not on your life. Watch Wait, and you'll see what happens, folks. It's going to get ugly. Remember, a lot of the, uh, the the points that were scored last year, some of those were gimmicks down inside the red zone. And we all said, well, yeah, it's kind of cute, but it's going to come back to bite you because the other team catches up. Well, everybody's caught up. It's time to grade the Bears secondary, guys. How was the coverage today? It's sponsored by PPG Paints for the best coverage. Chicagoland Painters pick PPG, the coverage. C minus, and uh, Amukamara is now the best player on our secondary. You know, Cal Fuller, I know he had a pick today, but it was just, you know, pressure, you know, in the quarterback's face, he just threw up a, a, a give me. Our safeties, I'm telling you. Something's going on. Eddie Jackson is not playing anything like he did a year ago, and Ha Ha is is a laugh right now. Nobody knows. You don't even see him on the stat sheet. Dan, I got an answer for you. My answer to you is this, and to our listeners: defensive line has been lost in space, and the linebackers have been lost in space. They weren't what they were last year. We started out the first couple games. They were looking really pretty good. They were hustling. They were moving. But all of a sudden, that speed, that quickness by our linebackers seems to have disappeared. We're not caving in the middle, which is probably because Akeem Hicks is not there. That tells you how valuable he is. And what it's doing, it's showing you the weakness of our defensive backfield, the two safeties and cornerbacks. That's what's popping up. That's what we're seeing because they're not an effective play at our defensive line or our linebackers. That's why we've been falling backwards the last three or four games. That's how I see it. Okay, and you make a, a very valid point. Uh, let me just also say, check the tape. Early in the season, I said, yeah, we, we'll miss Vic Fangio, but we may miss Ed Donatel more, and that's the secondary coach that's now running the defense up in uh, Denver. Well, Danny, what's, what happened? The defensive front seven on defense was so good last year yep. and started out this year. What the hell? I, I could have played safety on this team right now. True. But I'll, <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Now what you're seeing, because that, that level of play is not there. So what are you seeing? Little weakness back there. We're not as good as they thought they were. And don't, They're not, the ball is not bouncing their way. It's not being tipped their way. They got to start playing football, and they have a little problem with it. And don't forget... The Charger receivers dropped two sure-fire touchdown uh, today. They dropped it in the end zone. Keenan Allen, come on, man. That was that was yep. after Let's you missed a field goal, after you, got, after you got a pick. Sponsored by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer and ChevyDriveChicago.com on 720 WGN. Bears going on the road to... Philadelphia trying to end a three-game losing streak as they lose to the Chargers 17-16. Before we get back to the calls, let's do Who Brought It Today, which is sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. The card to bring through it all. Who brought it today? Who brought it? The great fans. The great they were Chicago fans brought it. Yep. They kept cheering them and cheering them and hoping and praying that they can do something. So kudos to the Bears. Outside of that, forget about it. And booing them. Well, David Montgomery had a, a, a decent game. Can't really put a bunch of his feet, but but come on. I mean, again. You, yeah, you, to you, me, you, the fan, fans are the ones that yeah, brought it. Yeah. They, they paid the money. They sat through it, and they tried cheering them and bringing them on, and uh, they got the same answer as what the score came out. 
lost. Dave Montgomery, just for the record, 27 carries, 135 yards. It's five a carry, and he broke one for 55 yards, and he ran hard all day long. Give him, uh, give the guy some credit, right? Yes, he did. He did. Yes, he did. I, th I thought that was that was good to see. All right, Cheryl in Buffalo Grove, who wants to bring up uh, old number six. Go ahead, Cheryl. Well, you know what? With all due respect to the former Bears in your studio, I think the vitriol has gone a bit far, because I don't believe that Mitch Trubisky is a punk. And out of the words of the previous quarterback, he says, give him time. Because it's not like back in the day when rookie quarterbacks would get a year or two to sit on a bench and develop. And Trubisky's come to the league with hardly any playing time from college. And even number six says, give him time. So I think the vitriol has gone a bit far. Okay. With all due respect. And Dan, defense wins championships, yes? Why is there not any shape being thrown on Chuck Pagano? I mean, to say that Akeem Hicks is the defense and it can't function without him, one sack against a two and five team is inexcusable. Inexcusable. And to say Mac is getting double and triple teams, you're making excuses for him, but you're not making excuses for the offense. It's, it's not right. And I think the vitriol has gone a little too far today. Okay. Just my opinion. <laughs> All right. Just let me, let me say something. Excuse me. What's her name? Her name is Cheryl. She's hey, firing on you, OB. Not me. She's firing me. on Dan. Hey, Cheryl, <laughs> let me tell you something. Just a little, little tidbit. Have you ever heard of Deshaun Watson? Have you ever heard of Patrick Mahomes? They don't need to wait five, six, seven years to make it. Because no quarterback, if you can't make the plays, you're not playing, you're not starting the National Football League in four, five, or six years. Okay? You're out or you're a backup somewhere. Again, Patrick Mahomes, last year, his second year in the league. MVP of the league. Lamar Jackson in Baltimore is an MVP candidate this year in his second year, and he can't even throw the football, but he's a spectacular player. Uh, Talk about Gar Gar Gardner, Gardner Minshew. Minshew. I mean, a nobody six lady, pick she, oh from rookie uh, is, uh, you know, beating teams on a c consistent basis with his offensive production. But, now, by the way, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't the one saying, oh, Mac is getting double and triple teams. I, I, I watch was. him a lot. Yeah, you said it, and maybe a time or two or four during the course of the game, he, he, he may have been, you know, chipped and 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 doubled. But all I'm trying to tell you is this defense doesn't play with the same zest that it did a year ago. Now, is it Chuck Pagano? I don't know if you can say, you know, he he, he told uh, Eddie Jackson, don't be hitting people, uh, you know, uh, miss on receivers when you go in uh, for the collision and all. I don't know what, I, I'm telling you, it's a different feel not only from the uh, from the defense, but the team in general. It's almost like they have an entitlement attitude where they don't think they got to get out there and and you know smash some grapes. And they 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 did a lot of that last year. To, to win a world championship, young lady, what you have to do, you have to have all fifty three guys on that team going in one direction, okay? And and mental mistakes will kill you more than physical mistakes. All right, and we're physically getting beat. And we're making mental mistakes. That's what we're doing. That's why we're. That's part of the reason why we're three and four. And a big part of that reason is a quarterback who is not an accurate passer. And this is a passing league. And where it just happens to be the way it is. Yeah, and he's got a hand warmers on the last two weeks. So, you tell me what you think of, of a quarterback in sixty degree weather with a with a hand warmer on it. Relative to uh, other weeks, I think we've actually borderline been kind to Mitchell Trubisky. Nagy's under the, the biggest microscope today. Stephen Oak Forest, welcome to WGN. Going in one Steve? Steve, I'm going to put you on hold. Got to be ready, my friend. Uh, news is coming up here in two minutes. Adam Hogue is coming up from Soldier Field. And uh, yes, the Bears are, will continue to, at some point here, we're going to hear from the head coach. we got a two-minute audio by OB that I want to hear you react to because Matt Nagy spoke, spoke at length. I, 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 don't, I don't want to hear the guy. I, I know. That's why I want to. I, uh, I really don't. I know. I, you know, I, he has nothing to say. What he did, all he did all his talking today for, what, three hours out there in the field, he did his talking. And he let a two-and-five team come in at our home ballpark and take us down. That's his talking. Yeah. I don't want to hear him. I'm going to. Fight the good fight here. Maybe get it in there. But okay. All right. 312 981 Adam Hogue coming up from Soldier Field. News in two minutes. Bears do lose to the Chargers 17 16. That one hurt. 
Bears lose to the Chargers, 17-16, able to get away from Danny Trevathan on that play. You know, when you do the math on this, and math at the end of the day is what you got to do to figure out if the Bears still have a chance at the playoffs, which of course they do. There's your three and four. You could still, in theory, win nine in a row and get to 12 and four. But uh, look, you got the Vikings and Packers at six and one and six and two. One of those two is going to win the division. The other is going to most likely be a wild card team unless they collapse. You got a six and two Seattle team who's trailing a six and zero oh 49ers team. The Rams are five and three. Carolina's four and two. The Saints are look like they're going to cruise to the south at seven and one. It, tough sledding for the Bears. Incredibly tough sledding to get back in the playoff race. And by no the way, way around it. For that young lady that uh, was talking about uh, Trubisky as you know needing time to grow as a quarterback. Starting in his third year. Think about Carolina. They got a, a kid that hasn't, you know, played in this league, and I think they've won four in a row. They're, you know, getting beat today. But what about Cleveland with Mayfield? You know, we talked about the Texans in Kansas City, the Giants, Arizona, the Bills, the Jets, the Jags. Everywhere you look, there's young quarterbacks making positive things happen, and nobody in the league would trade quarterbacks with us. That's all you need to to know about it. That, that is you know, true. think about it. Who would trade their quarterback for ours? And that tells you everything. Adam Hogue at Soldier Field joining us now on Hampton will be with Cuz till five thirty today. Hoagie, welcome in, my my brother. What was uh, what was Adam Hogue's biggest takeaway today? Well, the biggest. Uh, first of all, if there was, if you were to write a book on a hundred ways to lose a football game, or just or make a movie, this would be the movie. This would be the movie here today because, I mean, you can go back. First of all, they finished with 16 points. They should have had six. They should have had way more than 16 at halftime. You know, this was a game that really could have been a blowout early, and they failed all those opportunities. Then they finally get control early in the and, – and they have the ball early in the fourth quarter. And I thought, here you go. It, your running back's already over 100 yards. You're pounding the ball on the ground. You're moving it well that way. Your quarterback finally has confidence for the first time all season. You have a chance to pound the ball here on the ground, get out of here with a 4-3 and three record, and go into next week with at least some confidence for your quarterback that clearly lacks confidence right now. And instead, what do they do? They throw the ball. And what does the quarterback do? He throws an interception. Then they get bailed out. They get bailed out. They still, okay, they get the ball back, and they still have the lead because the Chargers missed a field goal. And what do they do? They throw the football. And what does the quarterback do? He fumbles the football and turns it over. So now it's becoming a disaster. So really, to me, that was, I actually had more of a problem with that than I did what transpired at the end of the game with the field goal. Um, because actually as good as Eddie Pinheiro has been, I could see why he trusts the kicker more in that situation than his quarterback to move the ball or not turn it over. Well, and you asked Matt Nagy exactly what you're talking about, and he looked at you seemingly straight in the eye from what I could tell watching it on television and said, look, we didn't want to be too predictable. We didn't want to do run, run, pass every time. So he basically was trying to outsmart the Chargers rather than stick yeah. with what's working, right? Yeah, and what and the problem I have with that, he's not wrong. I mean, you don't want to become predictable. You don't want to have tendencies on offense. I get that. But that's the kind of stuff you work on during the week when you're preparing for a game, when you're setting up your call sheet. You have to have a feel for the game that's in front of you. And it, he just can't bring himself to just totally commit to the run. I it, and there's no guarantee it would have worked, but it would have at least taken the turnover most likely out of play, at least lowered the chances of a turnover. You can obviously always fumble the ball on a handoff, but the way this quarterback has played and the decisions he's made, I don't know why you'd want the ball in his hands. That's what I'm struggling with. When you have a chance to just get out of here with a victory, even if it's an ugly victory, it's a victory and it's one that you absolutely needed. So that's, that's what I'm struggling with there, and I just thought, just run the ball, win the game. Well, if you look at at Matt Nagy <clears throat> since he's been here, and look at the game plans from game to game, from year to year, and the more it goes on, the more I see this guy really struggles. He really struggles how to attack whoever the next opponent is the following week, 
whether it's a short passing game or do we go downfield? Is it run? Can we sprint out? Can we bootleg? I mean, what can we do? Can we go to play action? You know, when's the last time you saw us run a play action, a bootleg, anything? This offense is so scripted, and you have a 2-5 and five team come in here, and the only points we can score is 16 against this 2-5 and five team who in the second quarter looked like they wanted to pack up and go back to California. I, I, I don't think I know what I'm talking about. This guy, Nagy, I'm telling you, the more I see... He's way, way over his head, folks. It's just my point of view. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. And, and OB, to your point, the, the play action, I, even when they finally started putting Trubisky under center, finally under center, I formation, fullback, first play of the game at work, and then we like didn't see it for the rest of the first half. They start the third quarter. They do more of that. It's working. It's working. It's working. And I'm still sitting there screaming, all right, now is when you go with the play action. Where is the play action? And then finally, they hit Allen Robinson for, I think it was a 31-yard gain. And what was, what happened on that play? Play action. It worked. And then I don't know that we saw it again the rest of the game. I'll have to go back and watch the tape. But, and I think on those turnovers, again, I'll have to go back and watch it exactly. But I think that Mitch was back in the shotgun again. And, they're, you know, if you're going to throw the ball, fine, but at least do it off the action that you're creating with the running game. Because he admitted over and over again, Matt Nagy, after the game, how good the running game was today. It was. So work off of that. Especially when it's to your young quarterback's benefit when he's struggling. You want to talk about tendencies, when you put him back out there in the shotgun, that takes away the element of, uh, of, of the defense coming up and trying to stop the run when they're struggling to do so. I got a lot of questions about that. Well, and, and it, it, you know, obviously the announcers today, I don't know if you had a chance to hear it, but when they queried Nagy about that, he kind of in a, a smart aleck way said, hey, they didn't bring me in here to run the eye. But I guess what yeah. we're trying to say is when you get a bailed out on the goal line, now it's first and goal at the two. I don't care if you want to call it the wing Z. Get in a running formation and pound it in. Does he not understand the basic elements of football? Well, and here's the problem, guys. I, I think, you know, I see where he's coming from and that he wasn't brought in here to run the eye. Okay, fine. But it, uh, apparently that's what your players do best. Apparently your players and specifically your quarterback mm -hmm. can't run the system that you want to run, that you thought was going to be so successful. So you got to adapt as the coach. You got to run and call what your players are good at. And I think right now what we're seeing is a head coach struggling to accept the fact that his players don't run the offense that he wants to run. And I think there's a little bit of a stubbornness there to just, especially early fourth quarter, you got to lead, just dial it down, run the football, get out of here with a victory, especially when he could have left this game, I thought, with Mitch Trubisky gaining some confidence, which to me is a huge problem right now with the quarterback. Well, Adam, you know, it's listen, <clears throat> maybe his philosophy or whatever it is, what you were just talking about. But I'll tell you who has figured it out. I can tell you who has. The last seven teams we played, they figured out what he's doing. It's not a mystery to them. Yeah. Oh, my God. We struggle. The first six games, total running and passing and whatever you, whatever else you can do, you can't even get over 300 yards. Your average, what, about 256 yards a game? The first six games, and you're supposed to come out all fired up, ready to go for the season. It's all going to be great. We're going to the Super Bowl. And for God's sake, you can't even run or pass for a lousy 300 yards. Last week, Aaron Rodgers almost threw for 500 yards by himself. You know, but who's figured out what Nagy's doing is our opponents. Why? We can't score touchdowns. And all we settle for is basically field goals. Do what's the last, How often do we get in the twenty some points or thirty some points a game? We don't. It's a struggle. To, we get to ten points, to fourteen, to sixteen, to eighteen, to seventeen, to ten points. After four quarters, it's a struggle every game. Why? They figured him out. Does it make sense to you? We can't put points on the board. So somebody's figured out Nagy, and it's obviously 
the seven teams we played. Everybody you but agree Nagy. With that, Everybody but Nagy has figured out Nagy. Yeah, <laughs> they figured him out. He's not a mystery to our opponents. <clears throat> no, I, 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 you're, you're not wrong. Okay. Obviously, defenses have adapted. Adam, also, we had a call or two about the defense. You know, obviously, oh, they're supposed to be, uh, you know, the creme de la creme. And they don't seem to be able to make a stop against the Raiders. Yeah. We couldn't do it against the Saints, we saw today. We needed them to, to, to make a stop. They did on the, uh, the first, uh, uh, what was it, the interception. You know, obviously, they got them stopped. But at some point... You got to start saying, is Chuck Pagano culpable here? And I, I've already made the uh, the statement that Ed Donatello, the uh, the, the secondary coach, it's it, it's a huge, huge fall off. Not only in just uh, production, but how they're playing. You know, early in the game, Kyle Fuller's eleven yards off on a third and seven. At, 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 I don't understand that. You follow me? Yeah, I do. And and actually, you bring, I, I love that you brought up Ed Donatello because. Um, that's something I was talking about in the off season that it wasn't just that you lost Fangio. Ed Donatel had a lot to do with Kyle Fuller's development, uh, Eddie Jackson's development, Bryce Callahan, who obviously went to Denver with Ed Donatel and Vic Fangio. So that was a big loss and, and it should not be overlooked. And, and I think you're right. Look, I, I spent this whole past week not putting too much blame on the defense because when you're on the field for 60 plays and your offense can't get first down, that's tough. Eventually, you're going to break. Today, though, that's not what happened. The Bears dominated the time of possession in this game. They, it seemed like they offense had the ball the entire time. And so when the defense gets on, their, uh, you know, gets on the field and gives up a touchdown, a 75-yard drive in just four plays, um, it, you know, that, that can't happen. And even uh, there was another drive, the field goal drive, the 14-play, 83-yard drive. They couldn't get off the field on that drive either. That's coming out of halftime when you really hadn't been on the field. So there's obviously something missing here. There's an edge. Obviously, Akeem Hicks is missing. That's huge. But there should still be enough talent here to not give up drives like that, not to struggle to get off the field. And obviously, when you got an offense like this, the, the margin of error is basically non-existent. Well, I'll tell you what, we, the Bears had, excuse me, Chargers had what, 22 minutes, and the Bears had it 38 minutes. You, if you have control of that football by that big a margin for 38 minutes in a 60-minute game, I'm telling you, we scored 16 points. We should have scored the minimum of 36 points, not 16. Right now, it's 57 at O'Hare, 58 at Midway, 58 in Oak Lawn, and 59 at the Lakefront. I'm Pam Jones on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. 17 to 16. Blackhawk hockey coming up at the bottom of the hour. Blackhawks and the Los Angeles Kings from the United Center, 5.30 hour pregame. Puck drop a little bit after 6 o'clock on 720 WGN. It's our Bears post right now, 17-16 Chargers over the Bears. But the food was good, Bartolini's, thank you. Located The highlight of the day. It was fantastic, as usual. Always and forever, 144th and Podlaski in Midlothian. Phone number is 708 708- 396-2333, home of the 10-pound Bartolini meatball sandwich, when which you write, I crushed one today. When you write the book on how to make a meatball, you got to go over there. I mean, they're doing something. I don't know what it is, but I'll it was delicious. I'll tell you, the big chicken, like Dan alluded to a, about an good. hour or so ago, is fabulous. I don't know how the hell they do it, but they do it. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a delicious, delicious meal. Let's get Rusty in here on 720 WGN as the Bears try to... Now shake off three losses in a row. Rusty, what's on your mind? You know, I got to, first of all, the show is great. This is the first time this year I'm calling in, but the show is great. I got to tell you, I'm going to use a Ditka quote. We won't win another game this year. These guys are terrible. You made the the, uh, comment about he's he's paid to kick the field goal. Aren't they all paid to play the game football? These guys are terrible. They're terrible. And I was told today by a very good friend of ours that I respect, if you lose by less than three points, it's coaching. Right there. As far as I'm concerned, they got to get rid of uh, Pace, Nagy, and Trubinsky. Ain't going to happen. 
that's my comment. You guys are great. Thank you for having me. Thank right. you, Rusty. All right. All right. Well, here, let, let, let's just address that because you both are on the train that they've got to go. Everyone's, a lot of people are on the train. There's no question they've got to go. Right. So let's go with the order of how they're going to go. Matt Nagy was the <clears throat> NFC Coach of the Year last year. I don't think there's even... Even if they didn't win another game all season long, I think he's still back here as the coach next year. If I had to, if I had to bet on it, would you agree? No. If you, they don't win another game, are you kidding me? You think George McCaskey would put up with that? You know, he's. This is the greatest town in the world. You're talking about. This is the Chicago Bear town. You're talking about the greatest fans. And when you see that stadium start to empty out before the first half is over with, or in the middle of early in third quarter and early in the fourth quarter. You think he's not seeing that? You think he's not hearing the booze? He's doing that? And you talk about him, them losing, what, the next seven or eight games? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's been done before. He might step in and fire those two guys. I'd be shocked. He's got a five-year... I wouldn't be shocked. Hamp? No, I think I think they're thick as thieves. And in a way, they're in they're it together. They're thick as thieves, but yes. I don't think George would let this go on. Dan, you got to start thinking about the people that love the Bears and pay the money and come down there. That's what it's all about. And you got guys that can't put a game plan together, stinking it up, can't score points. Oh, let's bring them, bring them back again. I don't think so. I think there's a shot that George, he's nobody's fool, by the way. George might step in. If it goes the way that you had mentioned, they don't win another game, I'm telling you all hell break loose. Well, let's say they're let, going to win some more games. Of course they are. But I don't know but what they're going to do. He said but this, they week, don't. but this week in Philadelphia, don't bet on it. I'm just telling you, Phil, Philadelphia is a smart football team. Their coach is smart. Their quarterback's smart. They got a smart defensive coordinator. They're going to make you know who look pretty bad this, this next right. week. But here, let me just finish this. You know, Nagy has got, you know, a millstone around his neck. Most teams, like Belichick up in uh, New England, he designs game plans to put it in the Tom Brady's hands and let him drive the car and win the games. Here, it's just the opposite. We're trying to redesign the, the wheel by figuring out how we can have a team where it's not in our quarterback's hands. Great words, Danny. Okay. Great Great words. Thank you. But but at the end of the day, you can't hide him forever. And the good coordinators, sooner or later, find a way to put him in a position where he can lose the game. Uh, we saw it today in the fourth quarter. Danny, I, I think that, that I think they figured it out. For God's sakes, if we get if we get we never even get into the twenties, let alone the thirties or forties. There you go. They figured it out. Well, the I, only guy that hasn't figured it out is our guy. Well, I would make the other point, too, of what you're going down. Look, Belichick has had rosters that have been tr had tremendous variance in talent. But somehow, some way, he takes who he has. Now, granted, granted, he's got a great quarterback, and they get every last ounce out of it. With Nagy, it's like, well, Jordan Howard doesn't fit here because he doesn't fit in the system, so we need somebody to do that. we got to get Trey Burton because he fits into our system. Why has he earned the right to have this system where he gets to pick players that should just that can just fit in versus just coaching the talent you have and getting the most out of them. He hasn't earned that, right? Well, you're right on the fact to fit in his system, which is the wrong system. Go to the callers, please. Yeah, essentially, the old-style coaches, they take what they got and make something out of it. Right. This guy, he, he orders the ingredients. And still, the cake flip and falls. Daniel always thinks that, he's going to reinvent the wheel. That, that, well, we, hey, Adam, Hope just said it. You know, he goes, oh, well, the, uh, defenses make uh, adjustments, so we can't fall in that. So, in other words, he still thinks he's the smartest guy yeah. in the world, and he's going to outfox the uh, the opposition. Uh, Which was the same philosophy that Ryan Pace had in drafting Trubisky. He was just going to prove he's the smartest guy in the and world. And Kevin White right. and Leonard Floyd right. and the rest of them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. It's all over. You can wrap it up, put a bow on this bitch. This 2019 Chicago Bears season is over. Why? Why pretend like it's not? Why pretend like they can turn things around? Why pretend that even if it, they did, that it would make any difference whatsoever. 
They're done. This season is over. Admit it. Accept it. Because the quicker you do, the less you will feel. The quicker you do, the more therapeutic it will be for you. It's over. I said heading into this game that it wouldn't surprise me if the Bears won by two touchdowns or lost by two or three touchdowns and anything else in between. But we definitely got something in between, didn't we? The Bears are at home, coming off of two straight losses. San Diego, excuse me, Los Angeles. Ah, it doesn't matter because even though they're technically stationed in Los Angeles, even when they play there, they're not the home team any damn ways, so it doesn't matter. You're playing a team decimated by injuries yet again that doesn't even have a city that identifies with them as their home. Coming into this game, losers of three straight, two and five on the season, you largely shut down the Chargers running game. Phillip Rivers, future Hall of Fame quarterback, has less than a stellar day. You finally, finally, finally give the ball enough to David Montgomery where he goes over 100 yards for the first time this season. What are you going to get it away? And they still lost. <laughs> oh my god, I couldn't imagine at this point being somebody that shows any faith or confidence in Trubisky whatsoever. Like, what has to be rolling around in your brain? What are you on? And you know what? It's got to be such rank, vile crap that I wouldn't even want any of it. He's a buster. He's a bust. And the quicker that you and everyone else gets on board with that, the better it will be for everyone. Most certainly, who needs to come to that realization, if he has not already, is Ryan Pace, the general manager for the Chicago Bears. <sighs> you know, like... You get all of these trips in the first half into the red zone. And if it's not the crappy play calling yet again from Nagy, it's just the total incompetence of Trubisky at key points in time. Inaccuracy, inability to see the field, inability to read defenses, you name it. But even in spite of all of that, even in spite of all of that, knowing their quarterback sucks, knowing that you were going to go in here with a significant disadvantage at the most important position in the damn game, which you consistently do week after week, month after month, year after year. There were the Bears up in the fourth quarter. And it didn't matter. Here comes a Trubisky pick. Bad read, bad throw. And a little bit later, here comes Trubisky with the fumble in the worst possible situation at the worst possible time. The interception didn't bite the Bears in the ass, but the fumble most certainly did. And even with all of that, all of that, the Bears find themselves in position late. They get the ball back. Trubisky actually makes a couple of throws, which is kind of the M.O. Sucks for 58 plus minutes in the game. Two minutes. Not terrible. The Bears get into position. And you think to yourself, okay, I know Eddie Pinheiro missed a field goal earlier in the game. But you know what? So 40, 41 yards. He should be good. I'll ignore the element of the doink earlier on in the damn game when he missed the field goal. I'm going to ignore the doink. He's got to make this one. <laughs> <laughs> Lead to the Bears, who's still shitty quarterback, manages to make a couple of good throws for a goddamn change late in the game. Tell me where you've heard this before, folks. 
Only for now, the Bears get in position, think they have a kicker, and then realize, oh crap, we don't have a kicker either. The Bears' defense played well for a good majority of the game, but ultimately failed to tighten up and clutch up when they needed to move. Pagano, stop playing so much off the ball defense, you idiot! There is no margin for error, at least man up, not up. Be aggressive! But folks, of course, in that one small pocket of the time where Trubisky didn't totally suck in this game, the Bears get in position, field goal to win it, and they miss it. And they lose. Chargers come into Soldier Field, a crappy, beaten down team, and they end up winning. So now the Chargers, for at least one week, have a reason to hold on to some type of hope, even though they should, because they suck too. And the Chicago Bears now sit at three and four, with Detroit winning on Sunday. They're in last place in the NFC North, with a buttload of teams in front of them, if they're even thinking about making the wild card. This season's over. Get all those good feelings about 2018 and flush them out of your system. Just flush them out. Flush them out. Flush them out. That season's gone. And it most certainly as hell is not to return. I mean, what do you, what do you think of it at this point? Oh, they'll get the revenge against Philadelphia and then they'll go on this big, long winning streak and they'll win out and they'll go 12-4 and four, and they'll win the division. Shit, at this pace, the way Green Bay's playing, you don't even know if 12-4 and four is good enough to win the damn division. Let alone, let alone, that even if the Bears somehow pulled off one of these all-time great miracle closes to the last nine games of their damn season, where the hell do you think this team is going with this idiot-ass play caller and this crappy quarterback? Of all things, I understand it. Believe me, I do. Bears fans are tired of this organization consistently getting it wrong at the most important position in football. They're tired of seeing a team that since 1997 has invested six total first-round picks in the quarterback position and has rolled cracks with all of them. Trading a 97 first-rounder for Merrick Meyer. 99 taking K. McSuckass at number 12. Trading, and fucking, excuse me, 2003, they traded down from four, got the two first-round picks from the Jets, so that way they take Michael Haynes, and then, of course, that quarterback was Lex Lickin' Grossman! Then trading away, since this team realizes that they can't draft a quarterback, they go trade for somebody else's prom child. Let's get with the 09 and 2010 first-round picks for Jay Smokin' Cutler. And then 2017, let's turn right around in a Mahomes and Watson draft and take the guy with one year of college experience that, who at his very best was just going to be Andy frickin' Dalton and Mitchell Dan Trubisky. So believe me, I get it. But by pretending to think that he's not that bad, you're only showing just how disconnected you are from reality. By trying to maintain hope, all you are doing is setting yourself up for greater failure and disappointment. If you think that Trubisky is the guy, ding dong, dumb dicks, he's not. And if you thought he was, and part of the reason that you continue to defend him is because you think that he could be, but you more so want to do that just because you don't want to admit that you're wrong, it's okay. We make mistakes. I know our current culture teaches you that it's not okay to make mistakes and you don't get the opportunity for, to learn from them, but you can make mistakes. Tis better to jump off the wagon now because that motherfucker has sunk. It has sunk. It is not sinking. It is not taking on water. It has not gotten a flat tire. It has sunk. And, and here's the deal, too. Like, as bad as Trubisky's been, at least, if nothing else, it eliminates any and all doubt for this organization. He has been so bad that they know they must move on, and they know they must move on this offseason. Tis better to know than not know. Most importantly of all, you get to Matt Nagy. Should have been a little bit of danger, danger there with Matt Nagy, 
coming from a place in Kansas City where he was the offensive coordinator and the play caller for half a season, even though you ultimately know when Andy Reid is coaching the team, he is the shot caller, the play caller when it comes to the offense, period, no matter what the label suggests otherwise. He comes in last year, he wins coach of the year because his team is 12-4, and four, but largely they were carried by the defense. By the defense. He won the coach of the year because of the other unit, not the unit that was his specialty. So now, as that defense has taken a small step back in 2019, predictably, the offense has not taken a small step forward. They have taken also a small step back. When you look at this offense, what's striking is they lack speed. Where are the explosive playmakers? Ah, uh -uh, they ain't got them. Where's the physicality? Running Montgomery 20 times a day is a way to establish Montgomery, but maybe not so much with this offensive line. You don't have a quarterback that can play, and you don't have that creative, imaginative play calling and game planning and play design. You have none of that. So what the hell is the identity of this offense? But when you're in the red zone multiple times, you keep walking away with field goals. As much as you can blame the quarterback, you blame the goddamn head coach running draws on third and goal from the line. And then at the end of the game, the end of the game, 40-something seconds left, you've already got your field goal position. I understand Trubisky sucks. I understand the fear of if you put it in his hands one more time, you are tempting fate, and you risk losing the game. But damn it all! Why would you sit there and just take a knee and wait for the clock to run out for your kicker who already missed a kick, doink, earlier in the damn game from an even closer distance? How stupid do you have to be? So the Bears right now have a head coach who doesn't know what the hell he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. They have a quarterback that absolutely sucks. And they have a defense that is second tier right now. they got none of the key components that they really need. They're three and four, and this season is over. Are you going to wait? I mean, wait for Trubisky to bar out. Keep waiting. Oh, he hasn't been all that bad. He's been bad enough to clearly see. This is what I get. For putting aside logic and the deep down gut feelings to actually believe in this team this year. That's what I get for having hope. That's what I get for wanting to believe that this team could do big and better things. That's what I get. Well, I'm not going to continue to repeat the same mistakes. Just like Ryan Pace should admit that Trubisky is a sunken cost, I am admitting here and now that this 2019 Bears season is over and that this team is a sunken cost. It is over. Admit it.